It's this strange instrument because you can't see it while you're playing it at all. And you actually can't see what it is doing either. It, it's, it's pretty much invisible to the person who's playing it and to the people who are watching it. And uh, it's, it makes it very difficult for people to take photographs of me while I'm playing. Because they say, we want a picture of you playing. And, sure, I'm playing. They, we can't see the harmonica. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I mean, I have big hands. So can you play, can you get a bigger harmonica? And, you know, I, and I brought a whole bunch of other harmonicas, which I left in the hotel. There's all sorts of big ones. But a lot of times you see guys, harmonica players, pose for publicity shots with the instruments that they don't play. Because you know, they'll play this, but photographer says, I can't see that, so they'll get some big thing that they don't use to hold in their hand. Uh, this instrument was invented in southern Germany in the 1820s, and it was the inspiration for it was Asian mouth organs. Uh, if you look this up, there's the Chinese ones that are called the, the uh, Shou. Japanese ones are called the Shang, and maybe it's backwards. I think it's the Shang and the Shou. And the ones from Southeast Asia are called the Ken. Um, and they have these little reeds inside these tubes. And one central blowhole and finger holes on the tubes. And when you press the finger hole, it creates a vacuum in the tube and the reed vibrates. So the Europeans saw these instruments and thought it was a really great idea to have the sound of, of, of all these reeds vibrating, you know, playing chords, playing melodies, playing counterpoints. And so they invented this, which is kind of a cross between that idea and the pan flute. So what, what's inside here are, I can, take, I can take one apart and show it to you back to, uh, here. Inside this harmonica are these 20 tiny little brass reeds. The different parts of the harmonica are called the reed cover plates, which is what I'm taking off right now. Underneath the reed cover plates are what's called the reed plates. And on the reed plates are these little tiny reeds. See them? They're made of brass. And their, their sizes change. The lower pitch reeds are longer. The higher pitch reeds are shorter. And uh, they are screwed onto this thing in the middle. It's called the comb. And it's either made of wood or plastic or some other kind of material. And the, uh, the comb is called that because if you, if you take it apart, it would look like a comb that you'd use to comb your hair. And these reeds, if I pluck them, you can hear them vibrating. It's exactly like the little tong, little tines that you see on a music box. When, when the music, the little uh, brass points hit the little tines and vibrate them, it's the same stuff. Same exact reeds. So uh, these are also the same kind of reeds. Anyone ever play a world or electric piano? The, the, it's the same basic idea, uh, except they're much bigger and much thicker. And also accordions use these type of reeds, but they're much larger and thicker. So the diatonic harmonica is just, it's a sandwich. It's, uh, it's got the reeds on the outside, the comb on the inside and these holes. So if you just put your mouth on the holes, it plays chords. It's the only wind instrument that you can play chords on. And the way that the Germans designed it is they left out a few notes on the bottom so that, uh, tell me which notes are, are missing. This one's in C. There's no F. No A. So if you if, if you blow across the whole instrument, uh, you just you get an arpeggio. C major, right? But if you it's got three octave range, the same as a flute. The C harmonica has as much range as a flute. And if you draw on it in the bottom octave, what chord is that? This is C. So what chord is this? Anybody? Oh, is it um, is the bottom one uh, C F A? 
Okay, here's C. And here's the draw. Hmm? No guessing allowed. So if, if you're in music theory and there's a, you know, what chord is it? G. C and G. It's the one and the five. It's the two simplest chords in music. So the Germans designed this thing to be able to play the one and the five chord on the bottom. That's why they left the F and the A out. That's why it can't be an F chord. Right? So it's D, G, and B. And in the middle, they have all the notes so that if you alternate between blowing and drawing in the middle, you have to change your breath direction, but you get the major scale. So the idea was that you'd play the melodies in the middle of the instrument, like German folk songs, like. And then if you just put your mouth on the instrument while you did it, it automatically plays the one and the five chord, the simple harmonies for most folk music. Okay? And so they put on the instrument C. That means it's in the key of C, and it plays German folk music in C. So it also plays American folk music in C. If you are coordinated, reasonably coordinated, and can breathe in and out, anyone can pick up this instrument and play stuff like that. You just have to get used to the fact that the breathing goes in both directions. Uh, and it's kind of like playing the guitar with, the, with picking down and up. You know. But no other wind instrument does that. No other wind instrument uses the breath in both directions. So it can play chords, melodies, and it can play rhythms. You're using your tongue all different kinds of ways, your teeth, uh, chopping up the sound. And all sorts of sound effects and percussion. It's really amazing what's inside the system. So it, was, it got very popular in Europe uh, in the 1850s, 1860s. Uh, this guy came along named Matthias Honer, and he figured out how to make these things on an assembly line. Because previously, it, it was a cottage industry. People would, would make these in their homes. And it was all handwork. And it was very time consuming. But when he came along and started having them made in factories, they got really, really cheap. And then Honer started selling them all over the world. Uh, they became the largest harmonica company in the universe. And these harmonicas got to the United States, and people started playing American folk songs on them. But then something very interesting happened. It's suppo you're supposed to play in C on a C harmonica. That's, that's the whole idea. So if you're playing... the breath direction from blow, draw, blow, to draw, blow, draw, you get this. It plays a blue shuffle by itself. <laughs> it's like the other side of the coin. And in Germany, they didn't have that much folk music that was Mixolydian mode. Do you know about the modes on the piano? Yeah. So the G to G mode on the white keys, because that's all we have here, is the F is out of tune on this piano. So, so. Ooh, interesting. So African American musicians in America realized that this instrument was a natural for playing.